200. 200. Race, 200. Today, I head to the Cascades Langley Poker Room, which is known for good 1-3 action. I think that has a lot to do with the $500 max buy-in for the 1-3 game. I don't come here often because distance-wise, it's a bit far for me. For this session, the action I witness is quite something. And at the end, I want to give a special shout out to two people I met during the session. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy. This hand, I pick up ace-jack in the middle position. I open for $15, only the low jack calls. It's heads up into a flop of queen 95 all clubs. I hit nothing, and don't have a single club in my hand. Even though I have some backdoor straights, I'm not going to see bet out of position. I check. The villain also checks. The turn is a jack. Now I hit second pair with top kicker, which is likely in the lead here. But the board is even more connected and wet now, so I just check again for pot control. I don't think there's a lot of value to be made with my hand, I just mainly want to get the showdown. The villain also checks. The river is a brick. Now I lead out for $20. Having checked twice, I think my hand is under repped, and the villain might call a bet with a weaker pair. But he folds and I take it down. This hand, I pick up a6 at the cutoff. Everyone folds to me and I open to $15. This is not a good hand by any means, but with the ace, I'm happy to steal the blinds or maybe take down a small pot with a c-bet in position. The button calls and the big blind calls. The flop comes a7-10 with two hearts. The big blind checks. I think my top pair is pretty good here. The button and big blind can be defending against my late position raise pretty wide. I do keep in mind that I don't really have a kicker though. I see bet small for $15. I go with this sizing to fold out any air and keep in any draws or weaker pair. The button folds and the big blind calls. This is really good so far as the big blind will be defending wider than the button and I'm also in position for the remaining streets. The turn is an offsuit 4. The villain checks again. Now I decide to size up and try to get more value from the flush draw, all straight draws, and maybe a non-believing 10. I bet $40. The villain calls. The river is a 3. This is essentially a brick that doesn't change anything. I don't think 5-6 will ever get here calling 2 barrels, plus I block one of the 6s. The villain checks once again. I just think it's most likely a missed flush draw as I unblock all hearts. My Weak top pair getting two streets of value is probably the best it can do here. I don't think the villain is ever calling a third barrel with a weaker value hand. I decide to check it down and table my hand. He says I'm good. At this point, it has actually been a few hours into the session. I have been really card dead myself, which happens, but I have been seeing a lot of what I would call pretty wild action at my table. I think this is a good hand to show you guys, well to give you guys an idea of what I've been seeing. I pick up 9-10 off suit in the big blind. Under the gun plus 1 raises to $15. There are 4 callers before the action gets to me. I call. We are 6 handed into a flop of 8-7-5 with 2 hearts. I have the top open ended straight draw, pretty good, but out of position, multi-way, not much for me to do besides checking. Plus one also checks. The middle position bets $30. The low jack calls, the high jack calls, the button calls, and I get awesome odds to continue with a good draw. I also call. Only the plus one folds. The turn is an offsuit ace. I check. The middle position fires again for $75. And again, everyone just calls. This pot is just becoming insanely big at these stakes. I'm not even sure the players realize that. I still have a nut draw for such a good price. It's a no-brainer call for me. Please let me hit the river. And the river is a deuce. 
I miss and just have to give up here. I don't think I've ever gotten better odds for a nut draw. I check. The middle position fires a third barrel, this time for $200. The low jack folds, the high jack folds, and then the button tanks. He finally puts in the call and I fold. The middle position shows pocket sixes. That's right, he triple barreled multi-way with sixes. And the button shows a seven for two pair to pick up a huge pot. This hand, I pick up pocket aces at the cutoff. There are two limpers and I raise it to $25. Only the big blind calls. The flop comes queen deuce four rainbow. Great flop for me. The villain checks. I see bet for $25. Just hoping he has a strong queen and I can get three streets of value here. But he folds. Nothing really special here, but I just wanted to show that after observing the table dynamics for a while, I have adjusted my raises in this game quite a bit. I noticed that players are calling very wide, rarely 3-betting, and a lot of times I just see limp calling, basically no matter what the sizing is. So when I pick up value hands, I just pump it up for value. I raise it to $20 or $25 or sometimes $30 based on my position and the players I'm against, and expect to get callers. This hand, I pick up ace-king at the low jack position. Middle position limps. This player is a bit reckless, I'd say. A little while ago, I saw him ship his entire stack on the river in a line that didn't make a whole lot of sense. I never saw what he had, but it felt so much like a bluff. I raise it to $20. Everyone folds except the limper. The flop is Jack Jack 7 with two clubs. The villain checks and I see bet for $15. He calls. The turn is an offsuit 9. He checks again. Overall, not a good board for me right now. I think the only hand I can beat is a flush draw. I obviously lose to a jack or seven. I don't see trip jacks checking the turn though, but even if he had a weird straight draw on the flop, he either got there or paired up. I don't think I can bluff off this type of player if he has any pair. I check back. The river is another jack. And this is where it becomes very interesting. The villain thinks for a while and goes all in. I think for a while as well. If I didn't have the king of clubs, it would be an easier call since I completely unblocked the flush draw. But I just have a really hard time believing he is capable of jamming for value with a 7 or 9, or any low to medium pocket pair. The jack is so unlikely as well, especially since he checked the flop in turn. So it's a matter of can this type of player call a small bet on the flop with complete air? Based on what I've seen from him, I decide to go with my gut feeling. I flick in the call. He says you're good and I table my hand. This hand I am in the low jack position again and I pick up ace king of spades. The middle position opens for $50. I actually tank for a bit here. I have no idea what's going on with that open. I take a look at the villain's chips and he is pretty much committing his stack with that sizing. In a more conventional 1-3 game, I can probably fold here as an exploit, but in this table against this player, I feel like letting go of ace-king suited preflop is just too tight. I don't really have a 3-bet sizing here that wouldn't commit my own stack, so I just call as I'm 99% sure it's going to be heads up. My plan is hit an ace or king or flush draw on the flop and I'm all in. If I miss any jams, I'll probably just fold. Everyone folds and it's heads up into a flop of ace king four with two hearts. Can't really ask for a better flop than that. The villain goes all in. Easy call for me. The board runs pretty clean. I flip open my hand and the villain shows pocket aces. I tell him nice hand. Unfortunate cooler for me. I just keep wondering if I could have gone away preflop. Let me know what you guys think. This hand, I pick up pocket queens in the low jack position. There are two limpers and I raise it to $25. The high jack calls and the two limpers call. It's forehanded into a flop of king 5-7 rainbow. Not the best board with a king out there. 
Everyone checks. The turn is a deuce that completes the rainbow. The action checks to me. With a check around on the flop and the action checking to me again on the turn, I think my queens are pretty good here. Not only does it give me second pair, but it also blocks the queen-king combos. In this game, ace-king won't necessarily 3-bet, so I can't eliminate the possibility of the hijack cold calling with ace-king. But he did check back the flop, so it just seems more unlikely now. The plus one in middle position just limped as opposed to coming in with a raise, so it doesn't seem too likely they can have ace-king as well. I also don't think they would limb call a pretty big raise with something like king jack or king 10 or worse. I decide I can start betting queens for value here, maybe getting calls from non-believing weaker pocket pairs. I bet $40 and everyone folds. This hand I have ace of hearts and eight of spades on the button. Everyone folds to me and I open to $25. My open sizing now is just purely exploitative because I feel that the blinds are defending way too wide. And I don't think I'm ever facing the pressure of a 3-bet. The big blind calls. It's heads up into a flop of deuce 4-7 with two hearts. The villain checks. I have two overs and some backdoor draws. I decide to c-bet for $20. The villain calls. The turn is a nine of hearts. The villain checks again. Now there is a flush possibility on the board. However, I have the ace of hearts, meaning the villain is less likely to have the flush draw on the flop, and I can rep the nut flush even when I haven't hit it yet. My eight is also a good blocker for nine and seven combos, which would be top and second pair. My hand is just very good to keep firing on this board, as I can rep so many hands that beat his range. I decide on a bet sizing of $60, setting up for a third barrel on the river if needed. The villain thinks for a bit and folds. This hand, I pick up pocket fives in the low jack position. Under the gun plus one, someone I met named Malik opens to $15. I call the set mine. The cutoff and the button also call. The flop is an amazing deuce five queen rainbow, giving me middle set. Malik checks. Since the preflop aggressor has already checked before me, I just decide to lead out even though this is a dry board. I figure the best I can hope for is someone to have a queen and that's where all my value is going to come from. I bet $35. Everyone folds except for Malik. He calls and the turn is a three. He checks again. Having checked twice, I think he is either holding a queen with a questionable kicker like queen jack or queen 10, or maybe a low to medium pocket pair wanting to get to showdown. I want to keep him in with all those hands and decide with a sizing of $60. He calls. The river is a deuce, pairing the board and giving me the full house. Malik checks once again. The only thing I'm thinking about now is a bet sizing that he would call. There are no missed draws out there. His line just feels like what I was already presuming a one pair hand that would now have two pair on the river. I decide to target a queen and bet around half pot for $120. He thinks for a while and folds. Malik does tell me later that he had pocket sevens and that is a really good fold. This hand I have ace four of hearts in the middle position. There are two limpers and I limp as well. The cutoff limps, the small blind calls, and the big blind checks. We are six way into a flop of jack 10 six with two hearts. Small blind and big blind checks. Under the gun bets out $15. Plus one folds and I make a pretty easy call with the nut flush draw. Everyone else folds. The turn is the eight of hearts. And just like that, I hit the nut flush. The villain checks. It feels like the turn card heart is a scare card for him. He did lead out into a bunch of people on the flop, so he's definitely not weak. I want to keep him in with a good price. I decide to bet $20. He calls. The river is the seven of diamonds, and that puts out a four card straight on the board. At first, 
I'm a bit worried that would be an action killer, but the villain leads out for $50. Now that is music to my ears. There are almost always no bluffs here, so it's just gotta be for value and he either has a 9 for the straight or a lower flush. So now I'm just thinking which of those hands he has and what is the maximum amount I can get a call from. If he only has a 9, I think I can only min raise and maybe get a crying call. I think for a bit. And the way this hand played out, I think if he was holding just a 9, which would be unlikely, he would probably want to check and be happy to get the showdown. Betting with a 9 here is kind of value owning yourself, and I give the villain the benefit of the doubt that he wouldn't do that. I think he is leaning towards a flush that can pay me off big. I decide to raise it up to $200. The villain tanks for a long time and calls. We table our hands and he shows deuce three of hearts for a weaker flush. And I take this one down with a cooler. This hand I pick up ace 10 at the cutoff. There's one limper and I raise it to $20. The big blind calls and the limper calls. We are three way into a flop of ace 10 six rainbow. Everyone checks to me. I have top two pair on a pretty dry board. I just decide to bet big here and hope that someone calls me down with an ace. I bet $50. Surprisingly, both villains call. The turn is a king of diamonds. Everyone checks again. Even though this card brings in a flush draw, I don't think anyone has two diamonds here with the ace and king of diamonds out there. They would have had to call $50 with a gut shot with backdoor diamonds or a pair with backdoor diamonds that's not top pair. Just very unlikely. And pretty much for the same reason, I'm not too worried about Jack Queen calling $50 with just a gut shot. The big blind can be a non-believer on the flop, but I feel like the low jack almost always has to have an ace. I bet $100, mainly targeting that ace, as I think the big blind will be gone at this street. And both of them fold. Here are the results of this session. I was in for $1,000 and I cashed out for $1,656. That is a profit of $656. I just wanted to quickly give a shout out to two people. First person is Malik. Um, he walked right up to me and tapped my shoulder and asked if my name was Keevan. I said yes and he told me that he recognizes me and um, enjoys watching my vlogs. So that was just such a treat for me to hear. And then um, the second person, um, someone else at the table, his name is Zorin, and he just moved here to Vancouver from Calgary. And welcome to Vancouver. But he also said that he recognizes me and enjoys my vlogs. So first of all, uh, both of you, Malik and Zorin, you guys have such cool unique names it's just like straight out of a fantasy novel or movie it was such a pleasure to meet and play and chat with both of you you guys really made my day thank you so much for that and that is it for this episode thank you for watching i hope you look forward to the next